Look everyone, I've updated the uh, intro card for the episodes and we've got almost all of our regular players on there now, including little Micro Hobo Lobo. So hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Rocket Craft Season 2. So, as you know, money makes the world go round. That is true. And the same could be said in a Minecraft world. We all use diamonds as a sort of standard currency. Most SMPs do it, because, you know, diamonds are sort of rare. Um, but if you go mining for them, you're not going to struggle to find them. You'll have loads of money. That's the way it works. Except, you know, in my case, I'm doing a little bit different in this season. I'm not mining diamonds. I haven't mined a single diamond. And, um, and it means that I've got to try and find diamonds other ways. So if we pop over to the Bedrock Statistics screen, we can see that... Oh, there actually isn't a Bedrock Statistics screen. But you'll have to take my word for it that I have not mined a single diamond ore in this world. Um, yeah. So I need to come up with a way to make money in this world to be able to afford all the lovely things that people are building these shops for. So I'm going to build my own shop, and I'm going to get rich. Filthy, stinking rich. Or at least that's the plan anyway. So, I'm like, well, what's a good shop? And what's going to make me the most diamonds for my input? And I thought something that charges, you know, a diamond block a time would be, uh, would be a good start. So that is exactly what we're going to be doing in this episode. We're going to be building a shop, we're going to be charging a diamond block for something. And it's going to be something that everyone is going to be falling over themselves to get. But first, I'm over at the spawn area and we've collared a wandering trader and he's got a couple of mini blocks that I am very interested in. I'd like to get the cow sire as well but I haven't got any on me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to buy the scaffolding and the lapis because I've actually got that on me. I'm over here helping Cherry out with something. and um, So I'm going to buy the scaffolding and I'm going to buy the lapis because I'm trying to build up a little collection of the uh, the mini blocks because sooner or later someone's going to open up a shop for these things and they're going to want a load of them. So it's just helpful to like get a bunch while we can. So we'll come back and get the spruce logs as well. And the red nether brick, is that? Huh? Yeah. And nothing else really of interest there. So we won't kill this guy just yet. Hang on a minute. No! What? Who? Kez! How could you? How could you do this to me? Oh. Fiddlesticks. So, I think that's the third time I've been tagged now this season. She got me with my, she caught me with my pants down there. I was totally not paying attention. I should have known. Should have known. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I get to wear the tag head of shame again. Shame. Shame. But on the bright side, I actually get to make use of the lovely new tag building that I just built in the last episode. I think that's probably why she did it, because I get to use my own building now. And, uh, oh, and Demi's here as well. Hi, Demi. Didn't see you there. So, you should know the procedure by now. When you get tagged, you, uh, you fill out a name tag with your name on it, using the anvils provided, and then you stick your name on the wall of shame alongside all the others and we're trying we're trying to keep it in order so it started like on the top left and this is where it's got to now so there's me kez who got me hex got her we've got yeah you remember me getting hex a few episodes ago yeah but anyway so now i've got this burden to bear again but the difference now is that this tag building on the the, the next story up has a bounty box board thing so now there is actually an incentive to tag certain individuals so i will be very much taking advantage of that 
and it is a day later now so I can now go and tag some other poor unfortunate and I am going to be hunting my prey using cobwebs today because this particular person doesn't actually fly they don't use elytra so it's going to be a little bit hard for them to actually run away from me um, so I thought I'll I'll spice it up a little bit and I won't use my ally tribe to, to actually hunt them once I get there. Hence the, hence the cobwebs, you know. I'm just going to sneak up, hopefully catch them unawares, and just cobweb them, and they're not going anywhere. So, I'm going to be a bit blasé because I'm pretty sure this person is currently building their shop. Uh, I don't know if that's actually quite mean to be picking on someone that's currently building their shop, but. It means I know where to find them. The shopping district, of course. And where is this shop? Uh, let's be sneaky sneaky though. I've got a couple of invisibility potions as well and some swiftness as well. But the thing with the invisibility is I can't go fully invisible because of the tag head. Now where is this person's shop? Yeah, it's not over this side. That's Teacher's shop there. It's not in there. Ah, there we go. Hex is uh, Hex is distracting my, my prey. Yes, I'm going to go and tag Cherry. Because I'm pretty sure that she might have had a part to play in myself getting tagged when Kez got me. I think Cherry might have given her the heads up of where I was and what I was doing. So, this is payback, Cherry. Yeah. Right, she must be in... Yes, she is in there. I can see her name tag. Yeah, this is Cherry's new builder's merchant that she's building with uh, with Kez. So I think we're just going to bum rush it. I think we're just going to be like FBI open up on this on this thing. Boom. Oh, no, I've caught myself in the cobweb. No, 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 no. Don't go. Oh, God, it's going wrong. Uh, tag. Just take the tag. Yes, it's gone in there. Wow, I almost make a, made a complete hash of that then, but managed to get the tag into her inventory. Sorry, Cherry. I think she was distracted while she was typing as well. <laughs> but, you know, it's all fair in, t in Tag and War, isn't it? So, um, I'll just let her know that she can keep the cobwebs. Yes, I am a meanie, I know. What are you going to do about it? But I, like I say, I am pretty sure she uh, she tipped off Kez about where I was and what I was doing. So they they had a plan that they were going to tag me that day anyway. So um, they were in cahoots on it. So I'm going to get Cherry back. But I'm not just getting Cherry just because, you know, she dobbed me in to Kez. Oh, no, no, no. No, Cherry actually has a nice bounty on her as well. So um, we're going to fly back over to the tag building now and laugh at Cherry as she uh, fills out her tag for the wall of shame. But most importantly, we're going to go up and check out the bounty boxes because Cherry had two god apples that someone put on her. I don't know who that is, although I do, but I'm not going to say. And... Um, yeah, there's, there's actually some nice bounties in here. There's a couple of diamond blocks there on Jed. Um, mine doesn't really have anything in it. Ooh, 13 bamboo. They're really up in the game there from the 12 bamboo on Lanny. Um, yeah, I don't know why I didn't go for, for Lanny there. Uh, who else we got? Who's got a good one? Mojo's not got anything at the moment. Skits. Oh, Skits has got four diamond blocks. That's, that's not bad, actually. Rick's got some random quartz and a stack of sea lanterns. Um, not terrible. Drifter's got quite a lot of diamond blocks as well on him. Um, so as you can see, yeah, there's there's um, there's some nice bounties in here. Um, not everyone's got a bounty, but uh, certain people have if they've upset other people. <laughs> So yeah, I'm glad to be rid of the tag, and what we're going to do now is take those two god apples, and we're going to maybe use them in our shop. 
that we're going to be building. So you remember this janky plot that I showed you a few episodes ago on the hill? Well, I did win it for one diamond block, which was a bargain. And we're going to be building our shop in this location right now. And I am very excited for this because it's a shop that was done in last season by one of our good friends that isn't playing with us in this season. And I'm sure she would love the fact that I'm continuing the spirit of her, her, her very cool shop. Such a good idea for a shop. And, and it's going to be hopefully my main money maker um, this season. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little buildy time lapse and I hope you enjoy this and I'll see you afterwards. So there you have it ladies and gentlemen, I've built a giant ugly orange box with a question mark on it. Why orange you ask? Well that's because it's my favourite colour, you should probably know that by now. And the question mark? Well, that is the question. It is a new Lucky Dip Shop, which was inspired by Miss Sonic's Lucky Dip Shop from last season. It was uh, very popular and uh, she was charging 5 diamonds per shulker. And I'm going to be up in that a little bit because I think people have got more diamonds in this world. So, but I'm also going to be making the prizes a little bit more special as well. And so I'm going to be charging a diamond block per shulker. And what I've done is I've uh, made it so that I've got a retextured shulker box, especially for this, that you would have caught a glimpse of a moment ago outside the shop. And what I did for that is I took data that was extracted from the nocom exploit used on um, 2b2t that worked out that the least popular color of shulker box is the dark gray color that's the least popular color officially so i've retextured that to be my beautiful janky orange question mark box and yeah this is the interior of it. It's nothing special. It's just got to be functional. But I've left myself a little bit of a gap around the edges there. Because we've now got to build some redstone. Because this, you know, you know me. I can't make it just straightforward. I'm not going to just place the shulkers around the shop and you just sort of pick them out. Like it was in the old shop. No, no, no. No, no. We're going to make it complicated. More complicated than it maybe ought to be. But you know me. So. I've tinkered around and I've built some redstone underneath and behind and hopefully it will accept only a diamond block now and it will give you one of my special lucky dip boxes in return. So let's pop behind in a moment and show you. So it's, 
it's kind of simple there's a chest that you input your diamond into your diamond block and that lamp there is currently not on because it, we have no stock so as you can see you put your diamond in there's no stock it doesn't take the diamond it's genius so if we go around the back i'll quickly show you it the redstone is not terribly complicated at all it's just a simple sort of n for one system you put in a diamond block you get a lucky dip shulker from the dropper here so if we put one of my dj dip boxes in as you can see there's not much capacity to actually store much there at the moment and i don't really have the room to put a chest in there either but we'll we'll muddle through we'll, we'll work something out even if it's just a bunch of hoppers feeding into each other so as you can see the lamp is now illuminated we have stock if we put a diamond block in there it will take it away and it will give us a lucky dip box yay it works it was, like i say it wasn't terribly complicated redstone um but i just wanted to make it a little bit more sort of special than, uh, than picking out your box uh, it is truly lucky dip now you are at the mercy of the dropper and and the randomness of it and the hopper system so it's whatever box it decides to spit out at you is what you've been lumped with so i've just covered up the back there because you could see through the back of the chest into the uh the janky workings behind the shop behind the scenes now you can't really see much of what's going on behind the chest there so yeah i'm really pleased with how it's turned out it's um like i say it's foolproof in that when there's nothing in stock it won't take your diamonds i'll put some signs up to let people know how it works you know when there's when the lamp is off we're out of stock i'm hoping whoops i'm hoping that i'm going to be able to keep this thing topped up a lot like you know i'm hoping that it's not ever going to run dry for more than sort of 24 hours but then again you know what these gambling addicts are like and it is kind of a gambling shop isn't it the lucky dip um when they can't get access to it for a little while it makes them want it even more so what i've done this is now my first batch of boxes over at my base as you see there's quite a few of them yeah there's about 25 i'm, I'm doing in the first run so just to give you a taste of what's in this first run is you know we've got a uh, pickaxe there that's fairly good it's got the books to make it almost god tier a stack of gilded blackstone again that's kind of a pain to get and a few golden carrots a couple of nice books there a couple of mending books and a couple of shulker shells um again a couple of uh, stacks of iron blocks and some shulker shells there some bones because early game bone mill is pretty useful and the totems are useful as well four diamonds in there four diamonds in there a couple of them are you know duplicates of each other a netherite ingot that's quite nice two netherite ingots is even nicer and um a diamond block i don't have that many diamonds at this point in the game so i can't be giving out loads but a uh, stack of blocks of coal that could be very useful a nether star yes that's right a practically a beacon there's one of them god apples i got from cherry's bounty there's the other one uh, but i've been collecting these things from bastion so i've got quite a few now here we come to a bit of a booby prize uh, a couple of bells alarm bells and the bed conjure it's not bad that's that's worth a diamond block and a, sh and a sh you know you get a shulker as well in my eyes a pig step and a couple of books as well worth it and again another pig step but this time with emeralds and a couple of shulker shells another pig step but with totems this time because i've found a few pig steps in the bastions I'll, I'll come clean on that uh practically a god elytra even if you've got an elytra it's always nice to have a backup this one instead of the books you've got a load of rockets instead uh this one is a totem and a load of rockets so you know it's saving you some diamonds in the shopping district this one it's got my head in it and a wandering trader head and they're they're both worth loads you know and then this one it's fork candles yes forks and candles yeah it's a two ronnie's sketch that some of you might remember but anyway so that is just a taster of the first stocking of the lucky dip or the dj dip as i'm calling it this time around and like i say i'm sure 
this is going to sell out pretty quickly and i'm going to have to restock it almost immediately but we'll we'll catch up on that in the next episode because we are i'm afraid out of time for this one i hope you have enjoyed it and uh, it was a lot of fun as always if you did like it you know be sure to subscribe and smash the like button and drop me a comment as well because that helps out the algorithm as well but otherwise i will see you very soon take care and bye for now and i've got a little bonus for you if you made it through to the end of the episode here this little bit here is just for all the non-believers all the people that said no way is dark gray the least popular shulker box why would you retexture the dark gray one we love the dark gray one well here it is okay this is officially the least popular color according to the data from 2b2t and i'm gonna hand you over to fit mc and he's gonna explain it to you now so you can understand that dark gray shulkers are horrible when it comes to shulkers the default purple is the most popular, accounting for almost 27%. Red is in second place, likely due to being the preferred color for PvP kits, which are some of the most commonly traded shulkers on the server. Gray was the least popular shulker at around 2%. So yeah, like I say, it is like the least popular color, and that is official, according to the data from 2p2t. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to quickly point that out. Also, I would highly recommend you go check out FitMC's uh, video about that because it was very interesting and I will link it in the description. So yeah, bye.